We're gonna show you how we set up our dogfish boat to get ready to fish. The model that we have here is the electric motor ready model. So uh, it comes with a well for putting your battery in. This is the battery that we've liked to use. It's a Mighty Max, you can see the model. And um, it is a smaller battery, but it lasts a long time. And I, I like it because it's lighter and you can fit two of them into this compartment. So if, you know, it goes most of the day but if it runs out, you've got another one in there to switch to. So we put them in to the battery tray and then attach the clamps to them. And um, if your model doesn't come with the clamps, you can attach these really easily. And uh, two of those batteries will fit in there or one big one. So we'd put two batteries in there, close it up, it's ready to go. The other part of the battery system is uh, the electric motor cable. In the electric motor ready model, what you need is to have your electric motor hooked up with this kind of a plug-in. You can do that, we did this ourselves, or I believe you can purchase them this way. And you just plug it into the side of the boat where it's already ready to go. Push it in hard, and that gets you going with power to your electric motor. I like to set my chair up like this. And these uh, Coleman square chairs fit really nicely in here. I know there's other versions. It's just what we've found and liked. Um, and I like to face this way. Lad's gonna show you in a minute. He likes to face the other way. And rowing with this setup is just okay. We like the electric motor to use that the most, but you can row like this. Uh, most of the time, I use the electric motor and leave the oars up on the deck. And the, uh, the main reason I have oars in the boat is for safety. Another nice addition to the boat, I think, um, is some form of depth finder. Uh, depth finder is you know, usually very important for uh, boat fishing in a boat and lakes. Um, and this is Hummingbird's uh, portable version, uh, the 120. I'm not sure that they actually make this anymore, so you know you might not be able to find them, but I set mine up right here. I like it like this. It has its own batteries, so you don't have to hook up to the boat batteries, and I like that a lot. So the next time I buy one, uh, when this one goes out, I'm gonna try and find one that has its own batteries and doesn't have to hook up to the battery system. Then uh, anchor systems are easy to attach to the dogfish boat. The dogfish boat doesn't come with these systems, so you need to attach them. They're easy to attach with screws. Um, and this one I like to put on the side and have the anchor out the back. I like to have two anchor systems on my boat, but most of the time I only use one of them. So if I'm coronamid fishing, I'll put this one down and I'll put that one down. Uh, but if I'm just trolling along and want to stop and cast, I'll usually just put the front one down. It's nice to have two for anchoring for Corona mids, and I like them on both ends of the boat. Usually when I'm using one anchor system, I just like to use the front one. I put the anchor down in the front and then the wind blows against the front and that seems to help it hold a little bit better and not splash as much as it does on the back. This is a, a 10 pound anchor, I believe, and we use uh, these for the most part. If the winds get above 15 miles an hour, uh, then a lot of times it won't hold with one anchor. So I will double up and put both of these anchors on the front system, and that usually holds. But if you want a bigger anchor, I think I'd be tempted to go up to 15 pounds. Usually when I'm fishing, the reason I face this way, even though you're facing the back of the boat, it's kind of the way you row a, a usual boat, you know, a regular aluminum boat. Um, and so when I'm uh, electric motoring, I just turn like this and I look to where I'm going. And it works for me pretty well. Sometimes I'll go like this too and sit on the side. They're, they're stable enough that it works really well. And I just motor like that. I, I think I like this because when I'm trolling, then I'm trolling back out to the back end of the boat. I put my net right here along the side so it's easy to reach and ready to go. You can put it behind the chair as well. Or if it's a net that you don't mind stepping on, like just a metal net or whatever, it goes under the chair really nicely, pulls out pretty easily. Um, and then I put bags and things like that under the seat as well. I also like to put um, like my vest and fly gear right up here on this. It's a nice little perch for putting that kind of stuff. 
So you notice I don't have a rod holder on the boat. We just don't use them very much. You can get ones that attach to these bars. You can get some that will go into the plastic. Um, if you like them for trolling and that kind of stuff, sure, use them and attach them. We just don't. I just put my spare rod right here and then I'm fishing with my other rod. If you've seen Steve and I both fishing at the same time, I have my boat set up a little bit differently. My chair is in the back of the boat. So when I sit down, I run the motor from behind here. And the reason I like it like this is for me, uh, when I stand up, I have a completely open platform to fish. So I can cast here, fight the fish, nothing in my way. And that's why I prefer it that way. So both directions have pros and cons. Steve prefers it one way, I prefer it the other way, but they both work. I put my spare rods in the back of the boat. That way when I fish, they're out of my way. And then as far as oars go, my oars are a little bit shorter than Steve's. I just put them right on the sides of the chair in the boat, and I try not to use the oars at all. I strictly go electric motor. However, if I absolutely need to in a crunch, I can get the oars out and still use them effectively.